Seattle Wapskut First Nation. I would like to talk to you what it is like to be a child who never see a real school. How didn't you know? I want to tell you what it is like to never have the chance to feel excited about being educated. Was a child. Shannon Kustashian was 13 years old when she helped launch the largest youth-driven child's rights movement in Canadian history. Children in her isolated First Nation reserve of Attawapiskat were being educated in makeshift portables on a toxic field. For 30 years, children had been waiting for the government to provide them with a safe learning environment. Tired of the broken promises, Shannon and her friends turned to YouTube and Facebook to reach out to students across Canada. When she was 14, she was nominated for the International Children's Peace Prize. Shannon died in a terrible car accident on June 1, 2010. She was attending school 600 kilometers away from her family. It was actually just a few kilometers just up this two-lane highway that Shannon passed away. One day shy of her 16th birthday. I hope mistake. That was her favorite word. We use that a lot in our family. It means um, I love you a lot, very much. I'm here at Three Nations Lake, not far from Timmins. We're on our way to James Bay, to Attawapiskat First Nation. There, we're going to help continue Shannon's dream. Shannon had a dream that all First Nation children and youth would have equal opportunity to an education. Since Shannon's death, uh, many people who were involved in the Attawapiskat education campaign really uh, were struck by the tragedy, but also the sense that a door had been opened with that campaign. This is how one girl from a northern community in Attawapiskat First Nation said, I'm going to, with the company of other children, change the world, and she did. When you guys stood in the steps of Parliament that day, I think that changed the day, the fight forever. We have been called the forgotten children of Badawabskit. But we are forgotten no longer. Thanks to the efforts of thousands of students across Canada, the children have a voice. Three years ago, my sister, Serena Kostajan, here on this spot, pleaded for a new school for our community. But I ask, why do I have to come back and do the same thing once again? But our own government cannot keep a promise that they have made three times. All students in Canada deserve a learning environment that they are proud to attend, and that gives them hope. We want the same hope as every other Canadian student. From the heart. The message was very simple. That, uh, my daughter wanted to carry on. That every child has a basic right to education. It would be resources. What are you talking about? Facility. What are you talking about? An environment. Where are you going to be? Many reserves have schools that are in terrible condition. Kids in this country don't have a school that that they can stay warm in, that kids in this country don't have a library, that kids in this country don't have access to computers. This is where you both went to school from, from grade one to grade eight? Yes. Throughout my elementary years, she guided me. Like when I was in grade five and she was in grade six, I was trying to follow her footsteps. What Shannon did, she was so honest like on what was going on in our community. Like, Myself, I, I, I thought at first, I thought it was impossible to get to school, but Shannon talked to me and was like, nothing's impossible, it's like, we got hearts to speak. If you believe in something, if you believe something is not right, you can talk about it, you can stand up to it, you can make people change, you can make the whole country change. People who have goals, Respect that, because look at us, we're trying to get a school and get our education, but we don't have a school, and we really want one. Hey.
Out of the deep grief from Shannon's death, youth from the community came together with national education and First Nation leaders to carry on Shannon's dream. On September 23, 2010, MP Charlie Angus introduces Motion 571, Shannon's Dream, in the House of Commons. The motion calls on the federal government to close the funding gap for on-reserve schools. Educators across Canada to make Shannon's dream a reality because no child should ever have to beg or fight for an education in this country. I am here on honor of Shannon's dream that is being launched today and we have right now we have a lot of supporters. Shannon inspired us. She said we shouldn't have to beg for equal rights. She believed there was no reason for children to be forgotten because Canadians pride themselves on looking out for other people no matter where they are in the world. 48 new schools are required across the country. 29 schools need renovation. This is an investment. It's an investment in the future and this is what Shannon talked about. People need to know <coughs> what has been happening to children in reserves all across Canada. Children had given up hope and faith in themselves. Out of the mouth of these youth came a voice so strong, a voice so raw. You know, Shannon inspired so many people, and she made she reminded us that uh, our futures are connected in this country, and that we share a collective responsibility for children and their right to education. You're usually very proud to be a Canadian, and there are very few instances when I would say I'm not proud to be a Canadian, but I am embarrassed as a Canadian with the way this situation has been dealt with. It's very unfair that not all schools um, are as good as each other. Education, as it said, is a right and it's so important for everyone uh, to equally have it. Ontario Student Trustees Association, we actually passed a resolution in full support of Motion 571Y. It's just not about Ottawa Biscuit, it's about all First Nations children. With Shannon's dream, it's going to open, or it's already opening, a door for better communications and a better relationship with, uh, with Canada. It's bringing us in unity to bring one voice telling the government it's time to listen and change for all children in Canada. Perhaps you have heard the story of how Rosa Parks helped start the Civil Rights Movement. Well, we are the children who have been sitting at the back of the school bus our whole lives. And we don't want to stay there anymore. School is very beautiful. And I wish my community had a school like this. You guys don't know what we're experiencing until you see it with your own eyes. We want a proper education. We want the government of Canada to give us that, and we are demanding that we will not stop until each one First Nation child has it. <laughs> I am thinking by the time I graduate from grade 8, I will be graduating from grade 3 level. This is not right, it makes my heart sad. We are no different from other children around the world. Our hearts are beat. It made me um, realize that there are kids um, that are like um, still in Canada who do need help and who do need better education and it makes me appreciate my school even more. So it's about the students uniting and taking a stand on issues that matter to all of us. Now it's our turn. The, the Aboriginal students, um, they've, they've expressed their concern and they've, they've expressed their frustration and we're the fortunate ones, we're the ones who can do something. I think it's amazing that young people, Aboriginal youth, um, are taking charge and that they're saying that they want um, a good education. This is the generation that that, that sees the problem and, and, and wants to solve it. So now it's our turn. It's in our hands now and um, we got to make this happen for them. Thank you, Shannon! We love you! Lonely field on a cold dark night well, There's a light shining in the sky Judge your life by what you can own.
but they shine so bright, brighter than your gold. 